Welcome to the virtual tour of the University of Michigan Pathology Residency Program. We are really excited for your interest. My name is Anya Ovcharczyk. I'm one of the co-chief residents for this academic year, and my co-residents and I will take you on a tour through two sites, first being NCRC Building 35, and second being the main hospital over at the medical campus. Our program is composed of 28 super diverse and unique individuals from all over the world with various life experiences destined for the land of private practice, academic medicine, and of course research in the case of our physician scientists. Additionally, our faculty have remarkable training backgrounds and love teaching us everything they know. We really think that you can become an exceptional pathologist by training here with us and we're eager to welcome you into our pathology family. But without further ado, let's get this tour started. Here at the University of Michigan, we have two primary areas that you'll be working and training in as a resident. They are the University Hospital on the main medical campus and the North Campus Research Complex, also known as NCRC. The two spaces are about two miles apart and accessible by bus or car within the city of Ann Arbor. NCRC is home to spaces like the residence room, sign-out area, and grossing laboratory. On the other hand, the University Hospital features areas such as the blood bank, apheresis unit, frozen section laboratories, and autopsy suite, all of which you'll see as we move through this exclusive virtual tour. By working in these two different areas, residents are exposed to a variety of experiences, opportunities, and professional interactions, all of which help to enhance their training and medical expertise here within the field of pathology. Hi, my name is Lori Greisinger and I'm currently a fourth year resident here at the University of Michigan Department of Pathology. Right now I'm in our resident and fellow education space at NCRC. Um, and this space is divided into two areas. The resident space is behind me and the fellow space is just across the way. In the resident space, we're divided up into small cubicle sort of areas right now. There's plexiglass shields up for the COVID era. Every resident has their own desk, and at each desk, there's a dual monitor setup and a docking station for your laptop that the department provides for you. The laptop will dock into that station and broadcast itself to both monitors, which is incredibly useful when you're working with multiple different applications during previewing and research and anything like that. Additionally, each desk comes with its own microscope, so your microscope is just for you. You can set it up exactly how you like. It's always there for you to preview on, to do research on, so it's very nice to just have your own microscope there for you. Additionally, the resident desks all include a small rollout shelving unit where you can place slides or place uh, research sets, books, anything else you want to. There are plenty of other shelves and bins around the rest of the resident room. So plenty of storage space for all your books and research needs. We have a resident library. So the resident library contains books that are shared among the residents and fellows, and you can check a book out if you're on a particular rotation or doing some research or reading. It's a pretty nice comprehensive set of books. We also have a couple of dual-headed scopes in that resident library to use for viewing slides together. And in addition, we have another room in the resident space that has a five-headed scope and uh, large monitors, so you can use that for uh, viewing slides with larger groups of people and also looking at things on um, the computer while you're looking at slides. So the resident space, what I really like about it is that it's a very collaborative space. So when you're previewing for the day or doing some research, doing some reading, there are always people around to ask questions of or to bounce ideas off of, people from all different class years, so not just your class, we're all mixed together. So it's really nice to have that integration. The fellow space, like I said, is just across the way. So if you have questions for the fellows, you can easily ask them. The attendings are also just down the hallway, so you can find them pretty easily to ask them any questions. We have a kitchen uh, with a pretty large refrigerator, microwave. We even have a little coffee machine that the House Officers Association um, has given to us, uh, similar to the coffee machine that's at the main hospital. So as you can see, this is just a really great place to work. We've got everything we need to do our jobs and also to enjoy ourselves while we're doing our jobs. Hi, I'm Dr. Amanda Kitson. I'm a resident here at University of Michigan Pathology. I'm down in the sign-out rooms. We have nine individual sign-out rooms, one for each of our main subspecialties such as gastrointestinal, genital urinary. In the mornings, the main sign-out rooms are utilized by those services, so the residents will sit with the attendings and go over the cases that they have reviewed the night before, and those are all of our in-house cases. And then in the afternoon, we are free, usually after one o'clock, to go to the 
grossing room and to ask any questions that we might have on specimens with our attendings. They can come right from the sign out room over to the grossing room. Within the sign out rooms, we have two large screens which are able to pull up the pathology reports. They're able to pull up specifically what we write in the um, LIS system or the laboratory information system. So all the re pathology residents are able to look at everything ahead of time put in what we think. If we know the diagnosis, we can put that in. If we have any questions, we can put that in as well. We also have a large big rig, which is what we call it, which is a large multi-headed scope. This we use for conferences, large events, consensus conferences, resident conferences, things like that. What I really like about everything being on the same floor is that we have the lab down here, we have the slide library down here, we have the grossing room down here and the sign out room. So it really provides a great environment, not just for educational resources within the rooms, but also just having a lot of people with a lot of experience in the same place. Hi, I'm Julianne Chapansky and I'm a second year resident here. I just wanted to introduce our NCRC grossing room, which is where we do our gross examination of specimens, meaning we look for macroscopic evidence of pathologic disease. In our grossing room, we have 14 separate grossing stations that have all the necessary equipment you need um, to do the gross examination of your specimens. We also have a central area that's used for specific teaching conferences, such as our neuroconference, where we practice brain cutting, such as our overall grossing conference, where we learn more about the gross examination findings of common specimens and our autopsy gross conference where we're doing the same sort of teaching but with autopsy specimens. Additionally, we have special equipment available in the gross room that helps us even further with our gross examination. We have a faxatron machine, which is a special x-ray that helps us identify metallic clips or calcification on breast specimens. Additionally, we have the XART pathology bone saw, which is a specifically designed bone saw for pathology specimens to help us safely cut through bone on those specimens. As you can see, the NCIRC gross room has all the resources that you could want when you're doing your gross examinations. Now we are going to head over to the main medical campus with a quick stop at BSRB. Hi again, we're here at the medical campus now at the BSRB or the Biomedical Science Research Building, home of my PhD lab. We figured this would be a great time to show you guys our state-of-the-art research facilities, especially of interest for those of you coming to our physician scientist training program. So let's take a brief tour. My name is Justin Kelly, I'm a third year resident, and today I'm going to talk about the blood bank at the University Hospital. This is one of the few rotations that is actually at the hospital, which is great because our blood bank needs to be right at the hospital with the patients. Up front in the blood bank is where a lot of the techs are who handle a lot of the everyday things in the blood bank. In the back we have the reference lab, which we sit right next to when we are here in the blood bank as residents, so we get to work directly with those techs. We're also right behind the apheresis unit, so we work directly with the nurses throughout the day. The attendings also sit right next to us, so all that together, we are direct connection to everyone that we need to learn throughout the day when we are here on Blood Bank. During the day, we'll deal with a variety of issues with clinicians from transfusion reactions with patients, um, apheresis consults, platelet refractory workups, if there are any low blood products that we need to do approvals on, we'll handle all those. All this makes us very prepared for call and makes us very prepared for on the job if you ever have to handle CP issues on your job. Uh, with all of these resources that we have, 
from our text to our reference lab, the apheresis unit, and our tendings all together in one place makes the blood bank a wonderful rotation. Hi, I'm Will Perry. I'm a third year APCP resident in the Department of Pathology here at Michigan Medicine. And I'm going to be showing you the UH Frozen Lab today. Our department saw about 95,000 surgical pathology in-house specimens last year, many of which came through this door. When a specimen first comes in, it's logged and accessioned, then brought to a grossing station to be examined and grossed by the resident. From there, the specimen is frozen and cut on the cryostat, and the slides are taken over to the stainer. We have multiple grossing stations, so we can be doing a number of frozens at the same time or triaging other fresh specimens. After the slides are stained, they are brought into the frozen section reading room where they are looked at by the attending pathologist, fellows, and pathology residents in order to make a diagnosis. That was the UH Frozen Section Lab. I'll see you at Mott. Here we are at the Mott Women and Children's Hospital Frozen Section Lab. Let me show you around. As you can see, the space we have here is very similar to what we have at UH with three grossing stations and two cryostats. One of the main differences between our frozen lab at Mott and at UH is that we see exclusively pediatric and obstetric cases at Mott. The reading room here at Mott is larger than the one at UH. We have a multi-headed scope and several single-headed scopes. There's plenty of space for the pathology attending, the pediatric pathology fellow, and the residents and or med students. As you can see, all the equipment we use at Mott is the same that we had at the UH Frozen Lab, which makes the transition of coming over to Mott and doing Frozens very simple. This is the UH resident room. We've got a number of desks in here with computers. There's a microscope, a couch, conference table. It's a good place to come spend some downtime when you're at UH to chat with the other residents about cases, things going on on service, get some research done. It's great for when you're on call and it's really our home away from home. Hello everyone, my name is Batul Own. I'm a second year pathology resident here at the University of Michigan, and I'm here today to give you all a tour of our autopsy suite. So the unique thing about the University of Michigan morgue is not only do we serve the University of Michigan hospital system, but we also are the morgue for both Washtenaw and Livingston counties. Our team consists of our medical examiners, our forensic fellows, the residents that rotate on the autopsy and forensic service, our autopsy assistants, the medical investigators, and our biomedical photographers. The example of cases that we perform here include hospital adult cases, hospital pediatric cases, and fetopsies. We also perform medical examiner and forensic cases from the neighboring counties. Because of the number and the diversity of the cases we see, it is very easy for the residents to obtain the 50 required autopsies. So if you are interested in a residency here, or even a forensic fellowship, this is definitely the place to be. As you can see here, the autopsy contains three stations. That means basically three autopsies can happen at the same time. We also have state-of-the-art equipment that allows residents to perform full or limited autopsies with the help and direction of both our medical examiner and our autopsy assistants. As you can see here, we have our negative pressure room in which we perform autopsy cases on high-risk patients. Those include infectious disease ideologies like COVID-19. Over here is our observation deck. This is where basically the medical students, the doctors, residents, and law enforcement officers can stand and observe the autopsy cases being performed. In the back of the autopsy suite, there's the cooler. This is where the decedents are kept until they are appropriately released to funeral homes. Working in the morgue and being on the autopsy and forensic service as a resident is such a unique learning experience. No two days are alike. There's always something new to see. There's always something new to discover. And of course, there's always something new to learn. As you can see, our department is super well-rounded with a vast array of resources and training spaces. We really hope you consider our program for your next stage of training. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to email myself or my other co-chief residents. Our emails are on the website. And of course, as always, go Blue!